you are the best source to save your own life. Right. Uh, you know, so and being able to possess the mindset and the knowledge and know how to do that, you know, that starts with you know, training and education, but it continues with training and education all the way throughout. It never stops. You know, there's not like, well, I'm this end all be all. I'm this, I am this, I'm this whole expert. Um, I think, well, there's a lot of people who want to claim the title of expert. I can't be one of those people. Welcome back to Over the Barrel. Once again, no barrel. And we're not in Wichita. We just happen to be in Oklahoma City t t this week and we're talking to uh, the general manager and a close personal friend of mine, Cole Donhauer. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk a little bit about the facilities and the store here in um, Oklahoma City. And then uh, we're gonna get to know uh, who Cole is and we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, what his philosophies are on self-defense and life. And uh, we, we really don't know where this is gonna go, but man, we're gonna, we're gonna take and have a great conversation. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome to my guests. So welcome to Over the Barrel, my friend. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and how long have we had known each other? We've known Almost each other. Almost a decade? Well, probably close to a decade now. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Tell us who Cole is. Oh, well, first of all, tell us how we met. Well. I'm, we, me and you actually met through a mutual friend of ours, Joe Barnes' father of uh -huh. Superior Farms out of Louisville, Kentucky. Yep. And shooting and training with him, that's how I was able to take and meet you and you know, two you know, pretty much like-minded individuals kind of flocked together, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's where we ended up. Well, I, I believe that um, you know, people meet each other for a reason. Yes. Uh, I met you and I figured out that um, who you were and uh, what your character was about uh, through just... Um, dealing with one another on the range and then um, sharing uh, life stories off the range. Um, and then the fact that Joe liked you, that was really like the only check mark I needed, you yes. know, because he's, uh, he's probably the, one of the finest gentlemen I ever met and a great judge of character. That he absolutely is. So he also has his own um, over the barrel episode on, on our channel. So take, check that one out. Yes, so, very good. Uh, <laughs> tell us who you are. Well, um, I'm originally from Kentucky, uh, mm -hmm. born and raised, um, you know, completed high school, uh, enlisted in the Marine Corps in, in, uh, in 1991. Spent 22 years with that lovely organization. Missed it daily. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tore in Iraq, I tore in Afghanistan. And once I was retired uh, in 2013, uh, I was actually medically retired in 2013, I come back home and started working at Knob Creek Gun Range. You know, where, that's where, uh, you know, again, it goes back to that decade of you know where I met you and yep you know at, at that time and so I you know, spent some time there and then uh, you know you approached me one afternoon you know back in Wichita and with a uh, you know with a proposition and you know coming here to Oklahoma City and running Rainier Arms OKC for for you and I absolutely accept it. <laughs> well, I, it was an easy call to make for me. Um, we skipped over a little something though. Uh, you're a family man? I am. I have some kids. Uh, my youngest two kids right now are uh, 12 and 15. Uh, they are absolutely my whole world. I've got some older kids that are off doing older kid things and, you know, and, that, and that's great. Uh, but as far as being here in Oklahoma City, uh, you know, the kids come and visit and, and, while they're, and when they're not here, I have a German Shepherd who keeps me company. Oh man, I, I know that guy, man. <laughs> yes, he's the he's the he's awesome. Yeah, he, and he's in love with my dog. Yes, he absolutely <laughs> loves your dog. <laughs> who can't love Kaya? No, Kaya is a beautiful little girl. Yeah, Rock is Rock is uh, Kaya's number one fan. I bet you. Oh, she is. So, um, so a family man. So, I mean, what kind of person would on a phone call? uproot their entire life and move to a city they never lived in just to uh, open up something we need to uh, it was an experiment for us what kind of person does that well let me tell you uh cole donhauer does that Thank and it's you. because he's he's uh, you're an intrepid soul uh and then there's a lot of courage that goes along with that 
And then there's also a lot of what? So blind faith and, uh, <laughs> and, and, a, and, a, and a lot of uh, praying, probably. Blind right? faith, a lot of praying. I, I think one of the biggest questions that I got asked at the time when I decided to make this transition from where I was at in Kentucky mm -hmm. here to Oklahoma City, from, yep. from, from Louisville, Kentucky to Oklahoma City was, you know, well, you're, you're, you know, aren't you a little old to be making you know, a knee-jerk decision? And or you know, it's like, well, what about this? And what about your family? And you know, the thing is, is you know, I can understand that. But when you're passionate about something, when mm -hmm. you enjoy what you do, uh, you know, it's not a job. It's not a. It's it's not even really truly. I, mean, I think sometimes people say, well, it's my career. It's not even a career. It's it's a passion about what you have well, what you want to do the reasons you want to do it you know uh, yeah. you know being a general manager here for Rainier Arms is you know I've learned a lot of things you know to include about myself you know I've had to you know go back into some books to learn about certain things you know so I can make some you know the right choices and decisions and not just taking oh okay that sounds good well let's just do that you no know, there's no on the whim here it's Things have to be thought out, and so it's kind of you know put me back in that mindset of making sure that I'm making responsible choices and decisions, you know, not just for myself, but you know as far as as far as the store here, mm -hmm. as far as the company, because oh, yeah. you know whatever I fail to do or you know, if I fail at something or I fail to do something, it doesn't just reflect on me; it also reflects on the, on the company as a whole, and that's not what I want. You know, Rainier is you know, you know kind of you know. Rainier has welcomed, welcomed me into the fold, and I've absolutely embraced that. You know. But yes, it, you know, it was a, it, it was a, it was, um, it was a big choice to, and decision to make. Uh, I'm absolutely happy that I made it. Yep. You know, I would, I'd make it again. You know, I mean, you know, I have an opportunity here to take and to grow something um, um, of my own, and you know, and, and be held accountable for it, which. You know, part of being an adult is being accountable for what we do yep. or the things that we fail to do. That's right. You know, so, you know, that for me is, you know, that was a big step and I absolutely enjoy that. Man, and where'd you learn to do that? Where'd you learn self-development? Where'd you <laughs> learn to do that? Huh? Well, between, uh, between a father who was prior army and the United States Marine Corps <laughs> and some right. good parenting. Yeah, that's, yeah, it goes know yourself and seek, seek self-improvement. Self that's, that's one of the tenets that all non-commissioned officers uh, try to make, make uh, internalize and it goes through our entire careers. Absolutely. And then some of the training I do with your staff and some of the other staffs in the, in the company um, is that I talk about you know making time for self-development, whether it be on a day off, a couple hours on YouTube, or whatever it is, read a book. Yeah. It's, in t it's so important for us as professionals because you can either be a professional or you can have a job. Yeah, I'm not really interested in anyone that has a job. No, no. At this level and where we are, you know, you know it, everything we do is about being professional. Is about being a professional. What we bring to the, what we offer, why we offer it, why we say the things we do. You know, a friend yep. of ours once says, you know, you know, personal opinions are exactly that. They're personal opinions. Pro professional opinions actually come from professionals who know what needs to be done and why it needs to be done and then kind of articulate that you know and translate that to others they so know the theory they know the theory and they know it. also know the execution piece yes absolutely. so I, I you find a lot of people out there that'll know the theory part but they've never executed it so right. they don't know what the book says as opposed to the real world and it is little sometimes they don't they don't line up they're yep they, they do that like magnet <laughs> positive <laughs> positive <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's one of those things that's bewildering, right? Yes. And as a, a professional, it's dealt with uh, many, many types of people throughout my, my career, and so have you. That uh, when you when you bump into somebody that can't can't make that switch, it's uh, it, it, it's it's surprising. Yeah. It really is. It is. Uh, so you moved here. Um, well, there was a shell of a building when you when you first walked in. I remember when I first brought you here. You're like, good <laughs> lord, what's, how's this going to be a store? Oh no, I mean you know. You know Actually, it was like, you know, seeing it and you can kind of picture the way that, you, you know. The, I think I sent you pictures and there was a dirt floor in this yeah, building. Yeah, you, you did. You know, some of the first pictures I got were, you know, nothing was here. None of this was here. Uh, it was just a shell and dirt floor and pipe sticking up out of the ground. And it's kind of, oh, okay. But looking at that, you know, the biggest thing about that, though, is, is you kind of get to envision it the way you see it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and what you want it to become, you know, and then being able to take in take that from a thought 
and say, okay, yeah, this is where we want to set up, how we want it set up, and yeah. this is why. You know, that, that was, that's been, that was absolutely fun. And I, and I just didn't do that on my own. You know, I did have some help from, you know, from the coworkers here, you know, from, uh, you know, Rick and Landon and Juan, and you know, which, you know, have, and, and Jake, you know, which two of those guys are currently doing other things right now. <laughs> so what other we do clients. is, what do we do? We, we hire veterans when we can. Yes, sir. Right. Absolutely. And then, uh, doesn't scare us if you're in the active or if you're in the guard or reserve. Well, absolutely not. I mean, that, that shows, you know, you, you know, you're, you know, that, shows that you can manage your commitments and what needs to be done mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is absolutely admirable i see it so you know having jake as a very young man who is off doing air force things right now and mm -hmm. rick who is currently forward deployed with, with you know with the army uh, yep i mean you know that's great you know, and the idea that uh you know the professionalism both those two young men bring here to to rainier to oklahoma city actually is you know a part of this you know, they're you no know, they just didn't leave something behind they're coming back and you know we want to make sure they have something well to come back to i love jake man he's a live wire right he's got <laughs> his he's got a lot of enthusiasm he and, does. and a lot of uh, uh vigor in what he wants to do uh Absolutely. whereas rick you know he's a he's a sales machine he is he, you'll buy something from him and not even realize it <laughs> so uh and what i love about both of those guys they're on both ends of the spectrum what you would think of them uh, on uh, age you know yes. rick's in his 30s and then jake's barely turning 22 oh. or something here soon absolutely and uh they were both great finds uh, rick worked uh, with me at and uh, and wichita before mm -hmm. we brought him down here uh, he was a powerhouse up there, and I knew we were going to suffer when we brought him out of there to this store. But we wanted to bring someone in here who could uh, do the Lord's work and, and get this store up on its feet. And then the government has a vote, right? <laughs> so as soon as he gets down here, we open this store. The government said, well, the National Guard said, hey, dude, you're going to go to uh, the Middle East for a few months, and then you can come back. So yeah. the good news is his bride's doing well here. Yes, she is. And uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're constantly checking in to make sure she's good. We, and then uh, we're, we got his job when he comes back. Absolutely. You, and, know? you know, I mean, uh, I think Rick, I will say, I think Rick may have met his sales match, you know, between Landon. Landon, I think, could probably sell oceanfront property in Arizona. <laughs> uh, uh, he is absolutely phenomenal. Juan is, you know, Juan works very hard. He's just very dedicated to what needs to be done here. Mm -hmm. um, and these two and, and these two guys, along with myself here right now, mm -hmm. I mean, we are constantly educating ourselves on what we need to do, why we need to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and what's going to bring, you know, what's going to be best for us here yep. in, in, at this location here in Oklahoma City. It's it's remarkable, uh, and this facility is absolutely magnificent. It is it is a like what we want to do when we build a, a retail store out. We want to make sure it has a, a like a golf or tennis pro shop feel yes. for firearms. Absolutely, and uh, I feel like we've surpassed that here oh. with the architecture. The, the fit and finishes of all the, the building itself, as well as the, the equipment and, and firearms that you've brought in here yes. in order to put on the wall. You want to talk about uh, the level of firearms that you that you bring in? Our level of firearms that we bring in here, I mean, we have BCM, Daniel mm -hmm. Defense, uh, Stealth Arms, Staccato, um, you know, just, you know, that just you know, starts to cover a little bit about what we have. We, of mm -hmm. course, uh, we have SIG, uh, we have our we have our own our, our own series of firearms, our own line from our Ruck and Ruck Pro rifles, uh, whether it be 16 or 10.5 and SBR. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also kind of stepped off and, and done some 14.5s here as well with the Ruck rifle. Um, we have our Dusk 19R, uh, mm -hmm. which is our collaboration with, with Lone Wolf. Yep, uh, that is a nice, you know, very nice firearm itself. You know, ported slide and barrel and what that offers. You know, so I mean there. What we carry here, our ideal is that we just didn't want to, um, we just didn't want to be the average gun store and sell sure. guns. Yep. We wanted to sell working professional firearms for professionals, or even the novice, mm -hmm. you know, who is coming in and just getting in, and being able to say, this is why we carry these. This is what makes these firearms, um, you no. Know, very useful and reliable and why we say this not just because it sounds cool or looks cool i think it's a market penetration thing too because you could get all the guns that, that are in the gun stores surrounding you and try to sell them but what's the what's the uh 
impetus for the customer to come see you, right? Right. So now we have a higher level professional self-defense firearm. Yes. Um, the, and and the, at, at handguns, shotguns, or rifles. Absolutely. Right? And all the accessories that go with it. Yes. And then um, you have a, and I, I know this for a fact that, you know, from doing the secret shopper before we opened, that we have a level of uh, firearms here that's hard to find in the rest of Oklahoma City. Well, that's one of the things that's kind of set Rainier Arms apart from other other farm stores within the industry is that mm -hmm. we're able to have other farms that some other stores cannot. And we're going to get them first. And we're going to get them first. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, and so when people uh, know that and they're able to take and come in here, and see those things, you know, um, you know that you know, that is something that's very, very beneficial from us. And why is that? You think? But I, I, let me answer. Let me answer that question for you. I'm going to tell you why. Because our buyers and the rest of the uh, of the senior staff at Rainier Arms maintain relationships throughout the firearms community, so we're able to get things first. We're able to know when it's coming, and we're able to bring that to our customers very, very quickly. And that that either that goes on our online store or our retail stores across the com our country. We, we get it first, right? And we get the best for you. That's why we do that. That's the, what we want to take and bring to this community here. Mm -hmm. we, just, you know, we, we just don't want to be another gun store. We want to be the store that when you walk in, when you see the rifles that we have on the wall, when you see the Bravo, you know, the BCM rifles, you see our Ruck rifle, our, our, you know, our Sons of Liberty, whatever, whatever it is that you're you know, looking for for that market. Know that when you come here, that the reason you see it here is because we honestly 100% believe in the farms that's, that's here. Yep. That we would not have a problem using any of those farms or tools, whether it be for you know, a sporting, uh, sporting or recreation or even personal protection. Yep. So if we won't use it, won't, we won't have it. Exactly. Right? That's it. So if we won't use it, we won't sell it. Makes it easy. It does. Um, now there's a couple, there's a couple pucks that slip by the goalie, but we usually identify those pretty quick and get them out of here. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, there's a couple things I want to talk about, but the, the first thing I want to talk about is, um, I know the what, right? I know what you did. Right. I, I want to know why you did it. I want to know why, the, why did you go to work at Knob Creek? Is it because you needed a job? Probably not. No. Um, but tell me, tell me what import, what what sent you to that place besides it, the, the historic machine gun shoot and all the other things you remember as a child. Um, the real reason I went to Knob Creek was after I was medically retired from the Marine Corps. Sure. Uh, it was very difficult to kind of. It was difficult for me to. You think were medically fun. retired because you were too dangerous, right? Is that what they did? They were like, they, they, you're like major pain. They were like, look, you got to go. Yeah, okay. you know, they said, you know, put, you know. Probably put him behind a piece of glass as his break on in the event of war. Uh, and that's kind of where that sliding was. sliding coffee and nicotine under the door. Door, that's it. Coffee and nicotine was all this, you know, it's all that's required. Period. I am, I am really simple. Oh, man. Now, the reason Knob Creek was mainly as a kid growing up, I started going out to that range. The first memory I have of that on that range was when I was about seven years old. Oh, wow. With my father. Mm -hmm. uh, the brass is still probably laying out there too. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, my father and my father started taking me out there when I was around seven. Um, they it was had a good relationship with the owner of the range at the time, mm -hmm. which was Juni Sumner, uh, and then that range has kind of been passed from father to son. So I knew Kenny and his wife. Um, all family friends. I think uh, I worked the first machine gun shoot ever at 10 years, or 10 years old in a parking lot, parking cars. I'll be damned. Actually digging cars out of the mud, it was more oh, like yeah. it, because I That's was covered right. in mud. But exactly, so, <laughs> uh, you know, so, you know, so coming, you know, being re you know, retiring, coming back to Kentucky, um, you know, um, Kenny called me one afternoon and says, hey, you know, we need a range safety officer. Uh, we need a few things, uh, would you be interested? Uh, like yeah, didn't you no, know, didn't have to ask me twice. So I just I went ahead and jumped on that. Sure. So, um, and then took off from there. And so as a range safety officer into sales, into farms, uh, training and education, uh, concealed carry, um, and things of that nature. And I actually you know spent you know, that, that 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 set of ten years there. You know, really you know gaining knowledge for myself as well as you know, helping something bigger than I was. Because you know, it wasn't about me; it was about 
you know, making sure that we did things the correct way because you know, that's what we wanted. We wanted good people there at the range. So we go back at least once a year there to, to do some shoots, and it's called the, uh, the Barry uh, Foster Rendezvous, yes. Annual Rendezvous. Yes. And it's named after a friend of ours who uh, perished, and, uh, and uh, we want to remember him as much as we can. Um, and then we go back there every year and we go into the range house and I'm able to see um, uh, the people that you used to work with and the, the <laughs> admiration and the yes. uh, adoration that they give you tells me everything I need to know about how you treated those people there and uh, that you were part of their family. Uh, they are oh, well, no, they are definitely part of my extended family and have been for most of my life. Uh, you know, I, I have a, uh, I have a, uh, my, my niece's husband works there as, you know, and he's also a firefighter. I've got uh, Graham Gordon, who is a great guy, Mark Kincaid, who's actually married to Kenny's daughter. Hmm. You know, um, it's, it was no nepotism. It was, it was all. It was all. <laughs> it was all. It was. It was all family. You know, family, family, really family oriented, and, and that. And uh, I mean, you know, being able to you know be there and grow and learn from you know from someone who has been in the you know, been in the industry for over fifty years. Yep. You know, I mean, you know, Kenny, you know, I you know, learned a lot from him just as well as I've learned from you and try to learn from everybody I come across. You don't wear a mohawk, though, do you? No. Oh. No. Okay. That's too bad. No. I no, think no, no. You and Kenny <laughs> would look good with mohawks. <laughs> yeah, Stephen, uh, you know, Stephen, oh, God, you know, St uh, St uh, Stephen is Kenny's brother, and yeah, I had, he, he, Notorious for that mohawk. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen him without a mohawk. Um, but I mean, just is a Kentucky boy. Is, is he? Uh, yeah, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, no, everybody there, you know, has always treated me like a part of their extended family. And so being able to go back and work there, you know, for that family, and mm -hmm. and that was, you know, absolutely. I couldn't ask for something anything better. So, as far as firearms ranges go, and my uh, my opinion before I got there right. was that Knob Creek was firearms range royalty. <laughs> like you, when you went there, it's like going to um, one of the higher. It's like going to the U.S. Open or to Augusta, Georgia, to there. I was like, even though it's not, you know, it's not fancy by any stretch of imagination, but man, a ton of things happen there, right? Oh, absolutely. And uh, I always thought that was really oh. cool, and the fact that you 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 were willing to say. I'll go work with you over there, G Dub, and leave Knob Creek. It was a little surprising to me, honestly. Uh, well, you know, it, like I said, you know, it wasn't, it, it wasn't something that you know, I took lightly when you asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the opportunity that it presented itself for me to continue to grow, grow in this industry, to mm -hmm. learn, um, and to be accountable, you know, you know, that was, you know, that was a big reason. Yep. Uh, you know, for that, and I mean. You know, I would probably take, you know, if I got asked to, you know, if, if you know, today was, you know, a year, uh, a year and a half ago when, when you first asked me to take and do this, yep. you know, I would still take time to think about it. And, but my answer would still be yes. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I am not, you know, regret, regretting of anything. You know, the idea is, you know, I, I think sometimes, you know, I listen to people have conversations. Well, you know, if I could have done this, I would have done, you well, know, the thing is, is, I'm not. I, I can't be that. I can't do that. You know, if, you know, if my, you know, if if was the fifth, we'd all get drunk, right? The idea was ownership of your choices, yep. and no matter what, you know, I was presented with an opportunity to take and to grow, uh, to do something different, um, to step outside of my comfort zone, right? And it is a big step out outside of the comfort zone. <laughs> um, and yeah, you bought a house here in Moore, Oklahoma? I did. Yep. So you have your domicile here. And you're settled. I'm settled. Right. You know, I'm settled. Root, you know, roots are, roots are starting to take in. You know where you get, get all the good deeper. tacos already. Uh, Del Taco is good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Del Taco is pretty good. Okay. Um, of course, there's always Taco Bell to fall back on. Oh, I'm talking about local tacos. You don't need to be eating <laughs> uh, chain tacos. I mean, this. It's Oklahoma City. No, well, I'm, I guess the barbecue is good here too, huh? Barbecue is good here. Uh, there's a few good, you know, a few good barbecue places. Um, I don't, I don't get out too much like I should right now. Well, uh, you're busy. Time, time will, time will allow for that. But right when now, when Rick comes back, <laughs> time will allow up, for Rick. that. Well, yeah, hurry up, Rick, get back here. <laughs> uh, time will allow for that. But right now, first and foremost, before anything, you know, it is about the two guys that are, I, uh, two guys that I have here with me now. Mm -hmm. uh, Juan and Landon and myself, making sure that we do what we can for this location and for the people here in Oklahoma City to make sure that we are presenting our best foot forward on a daily basis. So what we find when we enter any uh, location is that we bring 
um, the Rainier Way, right? Yes. And we also are able to uh, really look at how s much safer we're, we're making that community through equipping and mindset. Right. Um, and I, I think that um, we'll, you're going to see, start seeing training here. Is that, is that true? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. So you're going to start off with some, um, some classroom-based training? Yes, we've got some medical classes that are going to be coming up very soon. Yep. Um, we've had a pushback on that uh, a, a, few, uh, a, a few days because of the instructor has some things that have come up and we need him to deal with that. But we have, uh, uh, we have some classes coming up here on 25th of May. Mm. Um, no. Yeah, the Wichita guys are coming down yes, to Wichita teach. Right? Coming down to teach, they nice. are. So that's going, to be, you know, that's going to be good to have. You actually, you can actually go to uh, Rainier Arms' website okay. and sign up for that class. Okay. Uh, so that uh, it's, a, it's going to be a use of force class. There will be, you know, uh, some lecture method and some and, and some scenario based uh, talking with that uh, with the instructor there. But I mean, that's going to be a good that's a good start for us. I love it. Um, you know, oh, I'm working on getting um, a, a couple of people to come in here with you. I, I'm thinking I'm trying to I'm gonna try to get Kerry Davis from Dark Angel Medical to come in and teach a class this, this winter. That would be good um, to have because here. hey man, you know. Uh, what's the chances of you using the handgun uh, over your med kit, <laughs> right? Med kit's going to get used way more, right? Med kit's going to get used as, oh, you know, yes. And heaven forbid you have to use your firearm for self-defense, and the person that uh, you had to uh, stop from doing bad things to other people or yourself are still breathing. Um, it's, it's our what? It's, 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 our, uh, it's our duty as humans oh, It's our responsibility. Well, we don't do nothing out of hate. We do it out of love. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna let you do bad things to good people. I love you too much to let you do that. I'm gonna stop you. you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna think, you know, and then I'm gonna, you know, do what I can to make sure that you can still be held accountable for your actions. Yep. Yep. You know? So it's it's humans. It's what humans do. I think a lot of people uh, real uh, think that you know the the uh, the gun carriers in our uh, our society are are uh, are a little more um, uh, ruthless than we are. Actually, it's probably just the opposite. Uh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. What do you? What are your views on that? Um, um, are the the people that uh, take responsibility for their own safety? I think people who take responsibility for their own safety are absolutely should. I think that uh, I think they have understood. Or they figured something out. Some others have not. You know mm -hmm. that you are the best source to save your own life. Right. Uh, you know, So and being able to possess the mindset and the knowledge and know how to do that. Oh, that starts with you know, training and education, but it continues with training and education all the way throughout. It never stops. You know, there's not like, well, I'm this end all be all. I'm this. I am this. I'm this whole expert. Um, I think. Well, there's a lot of people who want to claim the title of expert. I can't be one of those people. Uh, I'm not, in, not even continue to um, not, evolve as a. As, and I in in. in, in Okay, so I, I agree with you 100% there. Right. But I will also say that none of us can be experts because the the person that or the uh, the 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 entity that we're trying to protect ourselves from they right. change their tactics. So if you're an expert in that person at that time, 20 minutes from now that person's completely different because they learned how to make you a victim oh. easier right. or more frequently. So we have to continue to train to counteract. Abs it. Absolutely. Uh you know, training it, training is definitely that expert that it's a must um, expert I'm not uh, weapons and tactical professional I am mm -hmm. you know, I, I try to know what need what I need to about everything that may come across you know if there's something I don't know I'm not going to take and blow smoke up anybody's backside on that mm -hmm. I'll, I don't have a problem telling you I don't know yep you know, I'll go find out I'm going right. to go get you an answer and mm -hmm. I'm you know and you know whether it's right there at that moment or I, hey you know do me a favor put your number down here let me take and do a little research let me do some digging you know the ideal is that our environment is ever changing yep people are changing you have to you know know how to address certain people you know you can address a group this way and be fine you address another group the same way you address this group and you might cause their heads to explode you know <laughs> it's the same way it's, with dealing with um, personnel just, and leading. Yes, absolutely. You can't lead some. You can't lead one person the same way you lead another. Right. And no. that's frustrating to some people. I guess some people want the leader to act the same no matter who they are, uh, who's in front of them. But that's not a very effective way to do that. No, I, honestly, is that you know, you can lead a group, yes, but each individual that you're trying to work with and 
and lead, you have to understand what they bring to the table. Yep. You have to understand them personally, at least, you know, their demeanor, their character and who they are. Yep. Um, if you can't figure that out, then that's going to make things a little difficult. You know? mm -hmm. um, and that's you know, not the case. And, and the, you know, the caveat, you know, to put that back into a training aspect is, is that, you know, you have to take time with each person you're working with. Um, I think there's a difference between people who say, oh, I'm an instructor or I'm a trainer. You know, I'm instructor, instructor, instructor. Um, I understand the word. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I spent you know, time in the Marine Corps as an instructor or trainer, which I kind of prefer. Yep. Um, the same as I did outside and on the civilian side, teaching uh, concealed carry and training people with their firearms. Yep. Uh, you know, and trainers, I think, are a little bit more personable than what instructors are. Yeah. No, and no, you're right about that. I need to make a note to change something that just before it gets ordered. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to change the wording on it now that we just had that conversation. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's one thing like, we, we were talking earlier today and you know, we talked about, you know, reading something from a book or like we just mentioned a while ago, just a second mm -hmm. ago. You know, it's one thing to take knowledge and be able to take something and instruct from a from a platform and instruct in a certain way. And I'm not taking nothing away for those those guys who do that. I think that's great. Sure. You know, um, being on the deck outside of a classroom environment, on a range environment, being able to actually get each individual to understand what it is you're trying to take and t teach them and what you want them to learn. Yep. Know what you're doing while you're doing it. No, never take mm -hmm. it for face value. Yep. Does it sound familiar? Yeah. Always guard your intentions, right? Now, mm -hmm. For you, Joe. <laughs> I'm gonna take his line because I mean honestly. Well, he is our he is our uh, our guru. Yeah, right? he, yeah, he is absolutely the guru on that. And I think you know, and he and, and I on you know, with my whole heart, I believe you know that there's truth in that. Yep. You know, know what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, never take it for you know, never take anything for face value. Yep. You know, and always, always, always guard your intentions. You know, and I think you know from that you know from those three things as well as a few others you know. You know, in the way he addresses, you know, each individual, you know, it might be different, but he knows what he needs to do to get that individual to take and learn what needs to get done. And that just comes from uh, repetition of, of dealing with people on a daily basis. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly. What He's a genius at it, man. Yes. Um, so um, we talked a little bit about uh, people's responsibility for their own safety. I think if you outsource your safety to uh, law enforcement professionals or security professionals, they are minutes away when you only have seconds to live. <laughs> so that, uh, so yeah. you need to know how to protect yourself and then fix holes in you in case there gets one in there somehow. Yeah, and that's, and unfortunately that is where, well, where we are today. You know, people mm -hmm. don't, some people don't like change. Things change. Atmospheres, yeah. atmospheres change. Things sure. change. Um, you have to be mindful of where you are, your surroundings. You have to take and understand that, you know, you, you go to an event, well, you know, you don't need to stop doing what it is you love to do. You know, you just got to mitigate the risk. You've got to mitigate the risk that are involved with that. Yeah. You know, and part of it, and, it, and that mitigation comes from even knowing when yourself is that, you know, you can handle your business when that time comes. Yep. You know, that whole thing, rise to the occasion. And I know I'm going to mess this up, but you're not going to rise to the occasion. You're only going to rise to the highest level of training you've received. Mm -hmm. You know, and not saying anything. I prefer sink to the highest level training because it's a more of a negative term. Exactly. And it causes people to say, dang, I should probably tune myself up a no, little bit more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, and that's where that comes from. You no, know, you have to go out, you have to take classes. You got to make sure that you, know, you should be proficient with the tool that you're going to carry. Yep. You know, uh, it's not just, a, you know, all these you know, encompassing things from weapon safety, firearms handling, uh, you know, knowledge on how to use the tool that you mm -hmm. have. Oh, why do you use the tool that you have? All these things come in you know, and make a nice package for that individual. And yep. bottom line at the end of the day is this, you know, uh, I have to look myself in the, in the mirror every morning. Mm -hmm. Whether I shave my face, trim my beard, brush my teeth, whatever it is, I've got to look myself in the mirror every day. Yep. I got to be able to live with myself. And I can't do that as a man if I am incompetent or not competent enough to save my life, let alone the lives of people I care about. Yeah, I mean, you hold yourself to that standard. Absolutely. Yeah. Every day. And then uh, what, what I find difficult is for me to hold the myself to that standard and not employ that standard on others. You have to. Right? Absolutely. And, but sometimes you're just setting yourself for failure. 
uh, knowing that uh, you're able to, uh, to protect yourself and some other people in an environment should be comforting to you as well as the people that don't have no idea. Right. Right. Well, and, well I mean, yes. You know, and the thing is, you know, I'm not going to you know, I got asked a couple a uh, few days ago um, if something was to, to, you know, to happen and, and you're with your kids, what do you do? My first priority at that time is my kids. Secure them kids. My kids are safe. That's going to allow me to go back and do what needs to get done. Sure. And I'm absolutely going to go back and do what I need. Whether can. it be your spouse or yeah, absolutely your mom, no. anyone. Right? No, those are no, no. At the time, well, when I was married, it would have been my spouse. Sure. <laughs> no, not that it would still wouldn't be the kid's mother. It's her mother. But you know, anyway, yes. The idea is that I'm going to take care of my immediate responsibility to I have to the people with me to ensure that they are safe. Mm -hmm. Then I can go back and deal with what needs to be dealt with. Right. You know, depending on what's going on, depending on the scenario, the situation, all those things are situational dependent. You know, at the time, bad guys get a vote. Well, bad guys don't get a vote. <laughs> well, they do until you take they, care they, of it. You know, bad, <laughs> bad guys might try to have a vote until someone, yeah. so, someone who is, someone who is good and you know, give you know does what they need to to make sure they have no longer a vote or a say. You know, and, and that's unfortunate that we have to make those uh, kinds of um, yeah, the decisions. It's done out of it's done out of uh, everything we should do. Everything we do is should be done out of love, not hate. Yeah. No. Don't want to hate nobody. Um, the world's full of hate. I don't want to hate nobody. I just want. Uh, I, I want to raise. I want to. I want to be able to uh, enjoy my kids. You know, make sure I can be the best example to them, my family, people that I associate with. You know, on a daily basis. You know, from my coworkers. You know, to people I may just. Uh, you know, to a customer that comes through the door. You know, yeah. I want them to leave here like you know. You know what? You know. Got a lot of truthful answers today. I didn't get nothing that was sugar coated. I got, you know, I got honest, straightforward answers, mm -hmm. um, and in a professional atmosphere, and that's what I needed. I needed to take in here the truth and not something that's made up. Love it. Yep, yeah, I, I agree 100. percent I agree 100. percent So we talked a little bit about uh, personal safety. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about. Let's talk about uh, the, the the average person's mindset and the levels of their uh, of that. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, the uh, well, reason why I'm bringing this up is because I want you, I'm going to put, I'm going to mention something and I want you to tell me what it means to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, unconsciously incompetent. Unconsciously incompetent is explained, or at least for me to explain it is this. You don't know what you don't know. No. Mm -hmm. So you're just blissfully you know, dumb. You're, yeah, you, know, you, know, you don't know something about it. You're, you, you, there's no, no, no knowledge of what someone may, you may hear in a conversation. You have no knowledge of what needs to be done. And in, in the context of self-defense? In the context of self-defense, that's what you can't do. You can't right. allow yourself to be, be in that. Mm -hmm. you know? So what about consciously incompetent, which is kind of like where I'm at on most things. <laughs> <laughs> Not whatever. Uh, I don't think so. Consciously, consciously incompetent. That's where your learning starts. Yep. Learning starts at that point because now you have realized there is a specific task, a specific skill that you want to know, mm -hmm. and that's where your learning is going to start. And you I, seek that training and out. And you seek it. And yeah. the idea is, you know, attitude, aptitude, and desire. As a student, which, you know, you know which I'm always learning, so yeah, we're always students. a student. So yeah. attitude, aptitude, and desire are the three things that you have to bring as that student. You know to understand that, but that's where your learning is going to start. And then you get to what consciously competent, right? Consciously competent means that you're performing those tasks uh, with thought, mm -hmm. and you're you know seeing those results get better and better, and becoming more proficient to where you know it's going to lead into the next one, which is unconscious unconsciously conscious com competency, competent. and then uh, and that's when you. Dangers, dangers presents itself to you, and you deal with the danger and don't even think about it. Exactly, it's being. You know, it's, did, I, did I align the sights before I press the trigger? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. You know <laughs> that's exactly what that is. You know, unconsciously competent. You know, mm -hmm. is that you no? Know, there's you no. Know, it's not a thought process. You know what needs to happen, and you're able to execute it right there. Yep. It's it's intuitive. It's almost inhale, exhale. Oh, I know where my wallet is. Let me reach for my wallet. It's right here in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Sure. Or I need my truck keys. It's right here in this pocket. Yep. It's just, it's intuitive. You're able to respond. You're able to handle your business. And that's what, you know, and that's something that you, know, you should strive for. The thing is, is you strive for it. I don't think you're ever going to, for me, I'll say, I'm never going to, I'm never going to achieve it because I'm constantly learning what need, what I need to do, reevaluating that and 
and being able and when I say that what I'm uh, and I may uh, to put it in a sense of what I'm saying is this is that I'm always learning I'm always there you know, yeah. I understand you know when this happens this is the way I respond this is what I do and I got that but it's always a growing process it never stops I always think about it like honing a, a knife or a sword or anything with an edge yes um, when you go from uh, consciously competent to consciously incompetent is the is the measure of the sharpness of the blade, mm -hmm. right? You really don't know how sharp it is until it comes out of the sheath and it does its thing, right? right. You're like, well, I, I just think if I got another couple passes on that whetstone that it might be perfect, <laughs> right? And that's what you want. You want to make sure that the, that um, that blade is ready to do its business. And when it right. when it comes out of there and it does its business, and you didn't think it was sharp enough, and you're like, mm, maybe I was, mm -hmm. maybe it was right, yep. so. Uh, I think of everyone uh, that's that's uh, that's training. They're they're honing themselves to a higher sharpness. And and as well as what and we should. You know you, the idea is, um, you know, finding good places to train. So the instructors that we have are you know, Rainier Arms Farms Academy. Yep. The instructors that we have there, are, maybe it's instructors in your local area. But, mm -hmm. um, being able to. You can learn from a bad instructor just as much as you can learn from a good instructor. Oh man, you, you're you know, not kidding. You know, and it's not something. You know, and it, you know, and when I say that, is you know, you can always learn from somebody. Yep. You know, it's what you choose to learn and what you choose to retain who makes a difference. You know, because those three things come back to into fact. If you're standing, if you have someone instructing you, and you go those those three things, let's go over those again. What is it? Uh, know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay. Verify, verify, verify. Never take it for face value. Yep. And always, always, always guard your intentions. Yep. Okay. So if you intend to learn that, know why, right? Exactly. Yep. Guard those intentions. Yes. If we use those three things in anything we do, we know who the charlatans are and mm -hmm. who the real people are. Exactly. Yep. And then when you when you show up on the range and uh, there's a charlatan there, it becomes very apparent. We've had a friend of ours named Doug, uh, Major Doug is what I'm going to call him. <laughs> Major uh, Doug. He lives here with you. He's your yes. neighbor. He is and, my neighbor. Uh, he's one of the, he was one of our first customers here, thank God. And uh, uh, Major Doug, let me tell you, he's had some experiences out there because he's not afraid to take training anywhere. He's got a lot of disposable income. I think he's, you know, as a major in the U.S. Army, he's probably independently wealthy. <laughs> I'm so still waiting to take and get the recipe for the money tour he's got in his backyard. <laughs> I need that. No, oh. he's worked very, very hard in his oh, life to has. get what he has. And his, and his spouse, I'm sure, uh, uh, is working hard as well. And they're a great, they're a great Army family and team. And, oh, yeah. um, and I'll tell you that... Uh, um, he's had some really interesting experiences with instructors that we don't have any idea about. Uh, he has. I've, I've heard a few of those stories from classes starting off with the students pointing guns at each other. It's kind of like that would have been, oh, I got to go. Yeah, I would have been. <laughs> yeah, but God, Doug finds the humor in everything. He does. He's got, you know, well, I mean, you know, it, it, that's his personality, which is great, you know. Uh, he can. Uh, yeah, if you're on the uh, the text message train <laughs> with Doug, with Major Doug, you're going to get meme after meme after meme after meme. It is entertaining, you know, and uh, yeah. You can never have a bad day. No, you can't have a bad day. You can't have a bad day with Doug. We shouldn't have a bad day anyway. We have opportunities for growth on a daily basis. Let's shift gears away from Major Doug, who's it's entirely hard to not talk about him. So let's talk about what you see in our market today that's, uh, that's a trend that's upcoming, whether it be a rifle or for pistols or, or whatever. What do you see uh, in your market here in Oklahoma City that we might not see other places? I mean, well, the, one of the biggest things that we're seeing now is just the need for solid uh, red dot optics on handguns. You know, most, almost every manufacturer right now is looking for some way to put a red dot optic on a firearm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and years ago it would be I, years it ago was a gimmick. Years ago, you know, people would, say, would have said, "Hey, you know, this is a gimmick. This is this, and it's not going to work, and it's just a fad." Well, you know what? It's not a fad anymore. Let me tell you a little story. <laughs> you and I were in Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. and a friend of ours would always say, "Red dot optics won't stay zero. Don't stay on your gun. None of that happened. It's going to get hot in the car. Battery's going to go out. All wow. kinds of things, right?" And then, you know, he carries under his garment, <laughs> and he's shooting the first drill of the day, and the stinking gun comes out, and it's got an optic on it. And I was like, "Whoa, oh, stop! Sorry. Hey, what's up with that? <laughs> what the hell just happened? My world just crumbled. The gospels of whether that I knew it were just changed." <laughs> by someone that I respected in the firearms industry. And then I said, and after he was done with that, I, and we had a break, I said, hey man, talk to me about that. He goes, they made them so they worked. They made them so they stayed on your gun. And they made them so they zeroed, stayed zeroed. So now, 
with my old eyes, I can hit more at faster and, and, and longer ranges. Yes, and, and um, you know, so that's one of the biggest things that we've seen in the market, just with the need and what's coming out there for it be Trichicon. Of course, Holosan is making mm -hmm. everybody up their game, which yep. is always a good thing to have within the firearms industry itself, because you know, we all, you know, this industry needs that innovation, needs those things. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, well, that is, I think that right now is one of the biggest things is need for solid rifles, uh, whether it be for, you know, personal protection, three gun, a combination thereof, you yep. know, being able to take and have the variations of those rifles and what they're capable of uh, and what, you know, and being able to train with the, train with those tools. Um, that's something else that we're seeing too, so. I love it. I love it. Sound of freedom coming over top of us. Absolutely. We're right by the Air Force Base here and they're coming in for the landings. I love that. It's sound of freedom. So um, the trends, right? So long gun trends, we're seeing people wanting more hard use rifles, right? And, yes. And we're looking, and they're looking more and more for uh, ways to mount suppressors on their guns. They are. You know, so uh, the hard use rifle you know, is really starting to come in line. Um, I think uh, you know we have you know we have our own rifle. Uh, we have BCM, LMT, uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, Novesky, just some of those and you know, those kind of you know, in, in my eyes some you know really kind of start to hit the hard hard use type thing you know yeah. the thing uh, one of the things that always you know i want to make sure that you know where i strive to focus on here for for myself and and and, our, and, and my co-workers is that we don't want to forget the civilian defense industry yeah we look at a lot of things and a lot of concepts come from well they got military contracts and they got this and they got that and yeah, they do, and that's great, and you know, and you know, and they make a great product. Um, you now I won't take nothing away from that, but you know, on the civilian defense side, you know, being able as a civilian to take in, you know, what's here, and of course, you know, kind of what we were discussing a while ago, the national leadership climate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with where that is right now, um, you know, we don't want to forget the civilian defense market. You know, mm -hmm. I want civilians to be able to come in here, know that they can come over here, they can find a farm that's affordable quality that's going to work for them it's going to do what they need it to do now whether yep. it's for personal defense whether it's for uh you know training whether it's for three gun match whatever it is that they know that they well, when they come in here and they what they see here you know they know it's going to be quality and we're not just going to take in hey here's a rifle hey have a great day you know we want to be able to set that individual up for success what are the needs you want what is it that you're looking for this is why we say this is a rifle that we're going to say would be you know we meet that need yep. and being able to take and have that and it's not to take away from anything else you know i'm happy that we have uh you know, farms manufacturers within the industry that have these military contracts sure that their farms are being used by the military right uh, protect us that's great well, we just got to make sure that we're still able to you know lean into the civilian defense side of it and understand where today's money situations are and the way things are that you know we can also put good firearms in the hands of a civilian who might not be you know well you know might be watching those pennies a little bit more yeah i think that um and the, as far as long guns are concerned what we have in this building is a second or third ar that you purchase mm -hmm. you know you're going to buy that first ar somewhere that's going to be inexpensive and you're going to you're going to outgrow it pretty quick Yes. Uh, hopefully, we get to we get to reach those people before they make that uh, error, <laughs> right? And we can get them to spend a little bit more money on a higher quality gun that will live with them a little longer. And I think that you guys are are trained in that in that out to ask the open ended fact finding questions, yeah. so that you find out what that that person that's standing in front of you actually wants. Yeah. Whether it's a first time buyer or a guy who's you know bought twenty. I really, I want to know what, uh, it's gonna be beneficial for me to know what you're looking for, well, what it is that you want the rifle to do, what is you know, what is it that you want to be able to do with that. That way I know this is where I need to go, this is what we need to discuss, yep. and this is why I'm gonna take you there. I'm gonna, you know, for what you're looking for. And and, and these guys here, you know, my coworkers do a great job at that. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, they better. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> They absolutely do. I mean, I, I like I said, I couldn't, you know, for myself and those guys, I mean, I, I couldn't be more proud of them. 
I love it, man. And, and, and we are too. Um, as you enter this market here in Oklahoma City, we know that uh, it's going to take a few minutes for or a few uh, months for people to understand who you are and what you're doing and why and where you're at, so they can come and 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 uh, spend their hard and hard earned money in here. Uh, but what they'll find is the customer service level that you provide is amazing, right? Oh. It's 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 way different than uh, well, it's it's our it's it's the Rainier way. Right. right? It's what you said earlier. You know, it is the Rainier way. You know, we want to make each customer coming here we want to make them feel welcome uh, too many gun stores i've walked into you know i've walked into firearm stores and i've had firearms pointed at me loaded firearms pointed at me i've had uh you know i've been looked at and got the head nod and like okay well i'm just gonna stay here and talk on my phone that's not what we want i want each um, i want the experience for each customer that comes in here to be individualized to that customer mm -hmm. you know you know making sure that you know they get you know the customer service that they're that they're looking for yep. and that they know when they walk out of here they're walking out of here uh comfortable with the answers that we were we provided mm -hmm. and the sense of wanting to come back or wanting to go say hey you know what i was just here i was looking for this um i actually got this which was a little bit more than what i was looking for yeah and you need to go talk to these people because you know they are going to take and spend the time with you to take in and to you know, get you what it is that you need. Man, that's perfect. And that's the only thing we can ask, right? We can, yeah. we, is, is that the person to be honest with us when they come in and then we provide the exact fit for that, <laughs> uh, for that, for that information. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, it, so, it's all within the delivery of what we do here. What else do we talk about? What else you want to talk about? Talk about anything? No. Um, I appreciate you all coming down today and I'd like to give Thomas, who's over behind the camera, which I don't, see a lot of his face on some things i see no no I well see. he's pretty ugly oh yeah he's not he's not that ugly. i mean he's not as pretty as me but oh you know, i mean you know well you know you and <laughs> you know you and joe are you know, you're, you're, we are you're, pretty handsome you're, yeah you're pretty handsome guys yeah. but uh, <laughs> uh i just say you know thomas thank Hardly. you for for the hard work that you, you know that you put in and, and we definitely appreciate that um you know i would like to take and say um uh, nothing here is about an eye you know, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, this store operates a little bit differently than others uh, in some some ways. You know, well, we have a limited staff, but the men that work with me here uh, are absolute true professionals in every sense. Of, you know, and you know, and they and they're dedicated to making sure that they you know present everything in a manner that should be to the customer, and that they're always con and they're constantly evolving and learning. No. Man, that's uh, that's and I owe that to them. That's yeah. ref that's ref that's that's refreshing to hear coming from their leader. But I wonder how they learned to do that. Maybe because of a lead by example type of mentality that you possess. I didn't choose the wrong guy for here. No, right? I know you didn't. I no. didn't do that, it's and just, I didn't do it in a vacuum. I had some people that uh, talked to you pr prior to that, and yeah. they said, "This dude's sharp. Let's get him in here." I'm like, "Well, I'm gonna ask him. I don't know if he'll come, but he did." No. So we're, I'm very excited that um, you're here, and I'm very excited that uh, we're entering this firearm space here in Oklahoma City. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity here in Oklahoma City for us to, to one, make it a little safer here uh, using uh, equipment and mindset, all right? And then training is going to come right in behind that. As we get better and better at finding venues to train, we're going to get better and better at bringing the quality trainers in here uh, that you're used to. Um, across the nation. So Cole's going to be a big uh, part of that. Uh, whether he does some of the training himself or he, uh, we find some trainers like uh, a Dark Angel Medical Guy yes. or maybe some other uh, firearms trainers to come in here and, and, and hold a class. Yeah. Hopefully we get Joe down here to do the uh, uh, to do that uh, bolt action lever gun class. General purpose rifle general class. General purpose, yeah. That's general there. purpose, yeah. So if you like if you've never had a lever gun class in your life, wow, such a good such a good class. Teach you how to gunfight with a 50 state legal rifle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've got a few of those. I've got one, you know, I got a nice 35 Remington, well, that I absolutely love. I know. 45 and you, and used to be the guys that taught the class. Uh, exactly. So, I mean, uh, that's uh that's that's that's, that's really good. You got to love it. Yep. So, man, I just want to thank you for being who you are, and I want to thank you for making the, take a leap of faith with us at Rainier. And I want you to, I, w I want to uh, thank you again for um, embodying what we what we try to do in, with the Rainier way. And no, you, and thank you. Are, you. And, you. And you are no less a brother to me than anybody. Oh, absolutely, brother. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, our friendship goes. Our, our friendship over the last decade has grown, 
and the trust and confidence that I have and respect I have for you. Yeah, man. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, that grows every day. Thanks again you know, thank for everything. You. So look, here we are, over the barrel, okay? We're gonna do this uh, first Friday of every month. I wear my Aloha Friday shirt so we could get ready for the weekend, <laughs> right? I'm trying to wear a different one every time. That's gonna get expensive over the, if we do a bunch of these. But um, tune in, share this to your friends. If you think it's funny, say it's funny. If you don't, if you think we're full of crap, don't say that because it hurts our feelings and we cry ourselves to sleep at night. But uh, I will tell you, <laughs> the, the best place to find the best gear ever is at RainierArms.com. Okay? I don't think you're going to cry over too much, <laughs> and I'm definitely not going to lose any sleep. <laughs> Thanks again, brother. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I appreciate All right, it. And then we're done.